How's it going everybody? Today I'm going to go through in quite some detail how to use this. So this is dopping wax, otherwise known as dopping cement. But instead of just covering the basics of it, I'm going to go into quite a lot of detail and give you a lot of tips and tricks that you pick up along the way when you start using it. Because I used this for quite a while before moving away from it and I'll talk about that towards the end as well. So yeah, I'll give some alternatives as well if you don't want to go for the dopping wax route. But if you are having trouble with it, I might be able to help you out and teach you a few things that will really make it a lot easier to use. It's really not that difficult. So stick around and we'll get through it. All right, so a good place to start is what you're gonna need. So we've got a few things here and we'll go through them one by one. Dopping wax. So this is the green dopping wax, as you can see. It does come in different shades of green. Each of these dopping waxes, even though they're color coded, they are slightly different even within their color coding. So there's green, there's red, there's black, and there's brown. There are a couple others as well, but they're far less common, and they seem to be a bit more custom, custom built. So the green is the low melting point option. So this melts at about 65 Celsius or 150 US, and then red is up another five degrees or 10 Fahrenheit, so 70 and 160. Black is around about, it's a bit under 80 degrees Celsius, about 170 Fahrenheit. And then the brown, the brown is interesting because there are a couple browns that are really low melting point, but typically from my testing, the uh, browns are a high shellac content and shellac's got quite a high melting point. So that wax ends up about 85 degrees Celsius or 185 Fahrenheit. And I've tested a lot of these way back, like three years well before the channel. I wish I could repeat the testing because it was pretty fun. I just used the water bath and thermometer and just measured exactly when these would melt. In chemistry, you do a lot of melting point tests, so it was just something that I was doing at the time, so I tested some dopping wax as well. So those numbers are just from my nerdiness and testing, and they can vary a lot. For example, the green, this is one of the more dark green kind of green dopping waxes. And the lighter stuff is actually, it tends to work better for me. So this isn't my favorite stuff, this is just what I could get my hands on at the time, so... This is all I've got at the moment because I don't actually use this anymore, but for today, we'll help you guys out and teach you a few things using this. So the second thing is heat. For heat, you can get away with a lot of things. I used to use a spirit lamp, which when I dropped the use of wax, I actually gave away a lot of that stuff. So I didn't have the YouTube channel back then. And for today, we're just going to use a simple standard little tea light, I think they call them. So a tiny little candle. So candle will work, spirit lamp is ideal, it's much better, much more consistent burning. You can It can burn a lot cleaner as well, sometimes this does leave a bit of a residue or deposit if you get too close to it. You can also get these special dopping stations. Now the dop stations I have not had any good experiences with. Typically, I'm using the green dopping wax because this is ideal for temperature sensitive stones like opal. And if you heat them up too much they're going to crack, they're going to split, they're going to shatter. For the low green dopping wax, those dopping stations tend to get a little bit too hot and it's constant heat. So it just, it really does cook it and even burn it in some cases. If you can get a variable heat one or you can get one that's really low temperature that's perfect for this, then that's, that's ideal. But most of them I just say stay away from it, get good with just like a normal flame and you'll be much better off. Now people have actually asked a bit about using something like this, so a torch, but this flame is just way too aggressive. You could use it to light your candle or your spirit lamp, but don't use this to cook your cook your wax because it will burn it quite quickly. And it's, yeah, it's just too, it's a bit excessive. Ease up on the wax, just go for a standard flame, you'll be much better off. Now, after that, we have the dop stick. So the dop stick, I like to go for wood. So you can buy wooden dowels. I've got a long one here that you can get from the hardware store just off camera. And I can buy this in up to three meter lengths, but 1.2 meters or four foot lengths is typically what I buy because I don't need that much and they are reusable. So just a little wooden, wooden stick. Buy a range of sizes if you want. Some people like to really use just one size, but I work a lot of large opals and then a lot of small opals. And one size just doesn't fit all. This one here is actually a chopstick. So I collect a lot of chopsticks and use that as dop sticks. They work incredibly well. You can get them down to really nice lengths. Just chop them where you want. 
and it's quite comfortable and works very well. The other option is this. So what you can do is you can mount a screw in your custom sized handle. If you've got arthritis or something, this is really handy. You can put it into a big block of wood and hold onto it. Don't need to worry about your fingers too much. I will say though that with any kind of nail or screw, when you're using the dopping wax, make sure you get the dopping wax down past the head and then have it mould up over the head and then onto the stone. If you just have it on the end and you put it up against your stone, you can lose connection with it on the screw or nail, especially on nails. In screws, at least you've got a little bit of something to catch onto, but with a nail, a flathead nail, they will actually pop off. So you've got to be a little bit careful with that. But later on, we'll talk about getting stones off and for that, the screw can be kind of interesting, but I don't really recommend it too much. The next item is tweezers. You're not gonna to wanna to put your fingers in the flame and hold your stone above it. You will end up with blisters. So I recommend these type of tweezers. I think they're called like reverse tweezers or cross tweezers, something like that. Cross locking tweezers, I think. And this just allows you to pick up something like the stone and not need to worry about it. It's gonna hold it in place for the entire time. You don't need to worry about how hard you're squeezing or anything like that in case you think you're gonna damage your stone. I definitely recommend the cross locking. It takes all the pressure off this hand and you don't really need to think about any kind of tension here. It'll just hold the stone, you can hold it above your candle and you're good to go. So then you've got your stones. Now your stones need to have some sort of nice little surface for the uh, dop wax and dop stick to go up against. So I always say just at least flatten your bottom or if it's even better if you can completely pre-shape your stone ready for dopping. So this is just a little bit of common white opal potch and here is a little piece of boulder opal. So you can see I've already flattened the back. That'll easily take a bond with the wax. And lastly, just a sheet of metal. This is aluminium, but stainless steel or something like that works pretty well as well. Just make sure that it's a metal surface and it's not overly scratched or rough. This will come in handy later and I'll show you a little bit of a secret as to why I like using this. But with that said, let's uh, get on to preparing the wax for the stone and yeah, run through the process. All right, now you guys have got a nice little bird's eye view. I've just lit up the candle. This is the dop stick, this is the wax. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna melt the wax, a little bit of the wax stick, scrape that off onto this dop stick, and then what you're gonna see me doing is rolling the stick down against the metal. But it's not just rolling up and down to get the wax to smear out. You also wanna slowly slide it back this way and that'll encourage the wax to stick to both the wood but also start extending past the wood and it's this little extended bit that's gonna to attach to the opal or to whatever gemstone you're working. So you just need to hold it right at the tip of the flame and you'll see here it melts pretty quickly. So I've just emphasized it there and then we'll just scrape some of that off. Okay, so here I've just scraped a whole heap of it onto the end of the stick. Just twirl it above your flame. It doesn't even really need to be in the flame. With this green dopping wax, it's really low melting point. And you'll see here, we'll just wobble it up and down, also moving to the side. Once it cools down, just above the flame again. It gets shiny when it's molten, so you'll be able to tell quite easily when it's ready to be rolled out. And this just avoids you having to touch it, because this stuff, even though it doesn't stick to your fingers, it is really hot, because we're melting it at 65 degrees, but really the flame is much higher than that. You've got to be a little bit careful with it. And you should end up with a nice little bit of wax with it extending out past the top of the stick, just like this. So that's your dop stick ready to go. And then what we need to do is we need to heat the gemstone that you're gonna dop, in my case, opal. And we're going to heat it up so that it's about a bit under 100 degrees. Now this metal sheet kind of trick for the wax spreading, this I think I first saw it on Pulitzer Opal's channel. He did a great video on it. And since then I adopted it straight away. But now I'll also go into a second trick, which I think came from my friend Riley over at NN Opals. When you've got an opal or any kind of gemstone that you're about to dot, but in particular opal, because we're trying to avoid too much temperature, you wanna know when you've heated your stone enough. So what you do is just chuck this in your little cross-locking tweezers, just like so, 
and I'm just going to wet this. I've got a little tub of water off camera, so I'm just going to wet it like this. So now it's showing a bit of the oval. And we're going to heat it until that water on the surface just disappears, just evaporates. And that's when you know you're going to get to about the right temperature. Now some people hold their stone in the flame quite directly, but I'm not a huge fan of that. I try to keep it as minimal as possible. And because this boulder opal is actually quite thick, we might not actually see the water evaporate all that much. So we'll just keep it going. And you can see on the bottom here that it's almost all gone. But when you're using a smaller, thinner kind of opal, you'll see it evaporate off the surface. And actually, this stone now has also evaporated off the surface, as you can see here if I zoom in. So see how it was wet and now it's dry? That's when you know that your temperature is just about there. And it typically ends up being about 100 degrees. I like to keep it a little bit lower than that. Riley has a masterclass dopping series and he went a little bit higher than that, I think. It's been a long time since I saw it, but it was a very good video. And now when the opal is up to temperature, you just want to get your dop stick up to temperature as well. See, it gets all that nice shiny look to it. Nice and molten. You can give it another quick quick grind against your, against your steel and get it right to the end. And then all you want to do is flip your stone over and you can mark where your zero point is, where your centering point is, and then just press straight down. Straight down, you'll feel the wax melt, and you want to go down until your stick, the end of your stick, ends up touching the surface of your opal. That's when you get the most stability, and with your finger, you can also dip that in water just to keep it wet, but then you can also push down and make sure that it's sealed right up against it. That's really important if you're using something like a screw. So you'll have it down and you just want to smear some of that wax down. But a lot of the time you don't need to worry and boom, just like that, you'll have a you have a nicely dopped opal. And then you just want to make sure it's fairly centered for where you're going to be cutting the stone to. When you're doing a lot of carving work like me, really you just want it to get a good hold and if you're going to do a freeform shape, it doesn't really matter. But if you're not doing a freeform, pre-stencil it on. Mark a center point somewhere on the back so that when you've got it down like this, you can see that dot, aim for it, boom, stab it straight in. And that's just about it for preparing the stick and getting the opal on it. Now the final thing is to get this off the stick and then I'll bring up a few other alternatives and a few other tips and tricks along the way. So let's show you how to do that. Now, you've got your opal, it's on its stick, it's on rock solid, really good bond. Carved it up or cut it up. It's exactly what you want, it's nice and finished and polished, and you want to get it off. So, getting it off is actually really not that difficult. What you can do is just get... I used to use the blade out of a pencil sharpener and just slide it in there and pop it off. You can also use things like putty knives and whatnot. I wouldn't encourage you to really just force it. This stuff... This stuff bonds really well. If you've heated the stone and the wax to the right level, this thing is not going anywhere. This is as strong as any glue, really. Maybe a little bit weaker than the epoxy, but really not much. And rather than just soaking it in water or something and trying to encourage it to let go that way, which will take ages, and the wax is actually really resistant to that, what I do is I get one of these. So this is the Ziploc back bag that the uh, dopping wax came in so there's a bit of residue there all you need to do grab this entire thing straight in the ziplock bag chuck that in your freezer i only use the bag so that you don't lose your boulder opals or your stones in the freezer because i have actually found a couple of rocks at the bottom of my freezer when i went to defrost it so since then ziplock bag you can use a container, but that's how I ended up with stones in the bottom of the freezer. So I still recommend Ziploc bag. Just close it up. It's not really that important. It's just going to make sure that you don't lose anything. Don't lose any stones. Another little bonus tip for you is holding these. So I've got things like old test tube holders and stuff because I work in science labs and sometimes you break one and then you, instead of throwing it in the bin, you think half a, half a test tube rack is still good enough to hold a couple stones, so you take it home. But... I recommend that you just get 
some packaging foam. So the hard styrofoam packaging foam, all you need to do is just, boom, stab it straight in. And you can fit hundreds on a nice little square of packaging foam. You can actually have them sticking out the sides. You only need one surface to lie flat. So everywhere else you can just stab these into it. Either that or just drill holes in a piece of wood, bit of 4x2 or something, and yeah, just stand them up like that. Now, dopping wax is good. It's really good. It could even be the best option. But there are some alternatives, and I personally have shifted myself away from wax and to the other alternatives, and that's purely because of laziness. Dopping wax I have to order online and have to get it shipped over to me. So that's the only thing that stops me from easily getting this. If I could get this down the street, I would only be using dopping wax, I'm certain of it. But I just don't want to stock up on it, and I don't want to have to run out or think about keeping up to date with my stockpile of it. So I just dropped it and went the lazy route for stuff that I can get nearby. So my go-to is Araldite, 5 minute epoxy resin. So a two part mix, I just have a nice little plastic lid of a lolly container or something and I just mix it on there and it, it takes a few extra moments. There's no heat involved so you're not heating the stones but you do have to mix the two part and get it mixed in nice, nice and good. And you do, you are on a timer. As soon as you mix this, the pot life of it is not very long. It is the five minute version. So you've got to quickly dop as many stones as you can with it. It'll harden or you'll run out and then you mix another batch and you go again. So it's not any easier to use than the wax. In fact, when you get the cooking of the wax right, when you get that melting process and dopping process all sorted out, this, you can get these done in seconds. You can just... You can pre-prepare all of these, get your stones, you're just heating stone, heating wax, heating stone, heating wax, bam, together, done. So it is very quick, and this, like you saw when I actually applied it, this set, and I could let go of the stone pretty quickly, it's very fast. They just both cool down a bit, some people like to quickly dip it in water or blow on it or whatever, but you saw that I didn't do either of those things and it held on straight away. With the epoxy you really do have to go for that styrofoam block and stand them all up and make sure they don't shift or slide or tilt or anything like that so it is it is definitely more of a pain but also this hold is probably a little bit stronger once it's fully cured you just have to wait for that i typically leave them overnight for that full cure so that's the drawback there super glue on the other hand that's your very quick option so i just Use a pretty boring standard super glue. These are some other options. Don't use one like this. So this is one that I've got for another project. This is incredibly like water thin. You're even better to get this or even thicker like those gel super glues, which is more what this one's kind of like, but this one's also pretty thin. So don't go for a thin super glue. But what this can do is go onto the stick and set just instantly. The bond is much weaker and it also softens significantly with water. And because opal I cut with water all the time, the superglue can actually give up if it takes too long for you to finish your stone. So superglue, you've got to, you've got to really think about that trade-off. The consistency of these kind of glues, as long as you're mixing them right, and the superglue, the consistency is there. It's always the same. It's this, in the case of superglue, it's really fast, just like the wax. And yeah, the only thing is that I can get these literally down the street, whereas this I have to order online. And that's the only thing that's made me shift away from wax. Now that I've got a stick, which here is broken into three, so now that I've got a stick, I probably will use this for the next few videos, because I love, I, I do love using the stuff. It's, it's really nice to work with. It's less chemically as well. These do create fumes, especially if you use a lot of super glue, you can actually start start sucking in a lot of fumes and they aren't good for you so stay away from that they're all they've all got their pros and cons so you've just got to weigh them all up come up with your decision and go for it i know a lot of people have been shifting over to these kind of simple glue methods just because they're accessible whereas this it does take practice so definitely don't get disheartened if you have stones pop off quite quickly just when you're starting out try to follow all those steps that i've gave you a lot of those things, those tips and tricks you build up over time, and yeah, 
So that was me pushing about 10 times harder than what I would have to on a wheel to get that to snap off. And you can see it's still attached to the stone. This stuff will bond incredibly strong. So just give it a, just test it a little bit. Just pretend you're applying force on your wheel and see how easily you can pull it off. Once you realize that you're pushing way harder than you would on a wheel and it's still holding on, it means you've got your dopping, dopping technique basically sorted out. Good luck. Have some fun with it, and if it's not for you, it's not for you, that's fine. You can go to one of these other alternatives, but if you can get this dop wax part right, it's uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And then, now that I've pulled this off, all you need to do to re reuse this is once again, hold it above your candle. So, hold it above your candle, just melt it, and then do that same rolling technique on the stainless. Definitely don't do it on this rubber matting, it will melt, but just on the stainless steel or aluminium sheet, just do that rolling thing, moving it backwards as you go, and you'll be good to go. Grab another stone, bam, straight back on. Hopefully that helped. That is how you use stopping wax. This is just the example of green, but the other ones are the exact same process. They just take a bit more heat to melt, and using them, you just heat the stone a little bit more. That's that, and I will see you in the next video where I'll probably be cutting a stone, maybe that's being held onto a stick by some dopping wax. So catch you when that video comes out.